G'day, Chris here, and welcome back to ClickSpring. In this video, I depth and plant the train of the clock. Planting the gear train is a big milestone in the clock build. Up until now, I've been constructing mostly separate parts, but for the first time, the wheels will be positioned and rotating in their final locations within the frames. Before I can get onto that task though, I need to finish off a few parts of the build that I skipped previously. One is the task of fixing the great wheel to the barrel, and the other is the insertion of the barrel hook. A common way to make this hook is to use a screw, cut off the end and then contour the inside. The features of the screw are as you'd expect, although a slight difference is that I've turned off the threads at the end to make it a little more convenient to insert from within the barrel. I drilled and tapped the barrel, and after forming a screwdriver slot, the hook was ready to be put in place. The tool I'm using to insert it is a right-angled screwdriver. Click the link if you'd like to see the video showing how this was made. The insert is nice and secure in the barrel, and I can now trim off that end and give it a file and light rivet to further secure it in place. I took the barest of whisper cuts on the lathe to trim off what remained after riveting, and I used some emery paper to help blend the surface in with the barrel exterior. And finally I completed the barrel hook by using a grindstone to trim and contour the inside face of the insert. So with the hook complete, I moved on to fitting the great wheel to the barrel. And for the most part, it's fitted in much the same way as the other wheels were fitted to their collets in the previous video. First off, the hole positions were marked out on the wheel. Then I drilled and tapped a single hole and used a commercial screw to keep everything fixed in place while I drilled out the other three hole positions. I also put in a pair of register pins to ensure that the wheel can only go on the one way when it's reassembled after servicing in the future. After the pins were inserted, I trimmed them back to stop them protruding into the barrel and then chamfered the edges with this chamfering tool. Quick touch with a file and some emery paper and that upper surface of the pins has blended nicely into the surrounding metal of the wheel. And then to complete this part of the build, I turned up a set of custom screws, polished and blued them and then used them to fasten the great wheel in place. Okay, so after all of that catch up, let's now move on to the main focus of this video, which is getting the gear train into place. Now, depthing and planting are the terms clockmakers use to describe the process of correctly positioning the gears relative to each other within the mechanism. There are some specialist tools required to get a good result, and one of those is this depthing tool I made in a previous video. A wheel and pinion pair are positioned on the tool, and the correct operating distance apart is determined by observing how well the gears mesh. The centre distance is slowly varied using the fine adjustment screw, and after each change, the meshing of the gears is assessed. Once the perfect distance is established, that dimension is transferred to the frames using the points on the other side of the tool. Now it's most common to see the centre arbor as the starting point for this process. But in this clock, the third and escape wheels are the starting point because the design of the frames means there's really only one place they can go. So I started with those two wheels first and lightly marked the top plate. 
Next, I made a start on forming the pivot holes. A small pilot hole establishes the position and also removes some of the waste stock. And then an oil sink is put on the outside end of each hole, starting with a standard twist drill and then following with one of these roller cutters. But it's worth noting at this point that the hole is still well under the size required to let the pivot pass into the frame. The rest of the hole is formed by hand, using these tapered clockmaker's brooches. Now you might be wondering about the need to form tapered pivot holes. Why doesn't a standard straight hole do the job? And the reason is that compared to general engineering, clocks need a lot of free play at the pivots. Mostly this is so that they can deal with the angular misalignment caused by flex in the plates, wear or even a bent pivot. But it can also help them cope with dirt and oil gumming up the pivot holes over time. A straight pivot and a straight hole that experiences misalignment or contamination might bind and stop the clock. A tapered hole though, combined with some side clearance, gives a pivot the necessary angular freedom to cope with quite a lot and continue to rotate. Many clockmakers use a rule of thumb that says if the arbor can tilt about 5 degrees off its axis all around the hole, then the pivot hole has the required freedom, so that's what I'm aiming for here. Once it looked about right, I gave it a test in the frames to see how it ran. It's coasting gently to a stop, and there's a nice click as the frames are tilted from side to side. That click is an indication of what clockmakers call end shake, another required clearance between the arbor shoulders and the plates. Each of the wheels was depth and then the arbors led into the frame in a similar way, although there were some slight differences in each case. The centre wheel was depth as before, but in this case a trumpet runner was used to mark off the dimension from the existing pivot hole. The actual broaching is as simple as twisting the brooch in the hole until it reaches the required clearance, whilst taking care to keep the brooch vertical to the plate. It's very easy to remove a bit too much metal though, so I took it nice and slow. The barrel arbor was the last to be let in, again using the trumpet runner to offset the distance. All of the twist drills that I use on this clock have been modified to make them suitable for drilling brass. Click on the link if you'd like to see a video about that. But even with that drill modification, this hole is at the upper end of what I'm comfortable with holding the workpiece as I drill. I really don't want any mistakes this late in the game, so I'm not taking any chances. Instead I've got the plate strapped down nice and firm to the table and I'm picking up that hole location with a wiggler. And now that I'm dealing with the larger holes, I can show you a bit more of the detail of the broaching. You can see that the cutting broach cuts long flaky chips from the interior of the hole. When the arbor will just enter, the smoothing broach is used. Its surface must first be given a fine grain, either with some emery paper, or in this case a diamond lap. The smoothing broach does remove a small amount of metal but its main job is to distort and work hard on the surface, to leave a hard burnished bearing surface for the arbor to rotate in. These particular pivots only rotate when the clock is being wound, so in this case I'm aiming for a fairly snug fit in the plates. And before I put everything together, the plates themselves need a bit of a tidy up. The thick end of the register pins will be getting in the way from here on, so they need to be trimmed back flush with the surrounding metal. I also bonded the pinions in place with some Loctite 603, washing the excess off with lighter fluid. So with most of the parts from the previous 12 videos on the bench, it's time to put it all together and see what we've got.
After so much time and effort, it feels great to see the structure of the clock finally starting to emerge. With the lightest of pressure on the great wheel, the whole gear train starts to rotate. In the next video, I'll make the ratchet click as well as the channel namesake, the click spring. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And if you've just found your way into this clockmaking series, thanks for checking it out. This is just one episode of a longer series where I show all of the steps to make a mechanical clock from raw metal stock. So be sure to check out those other videos. I also post project videos on making some of the tools I need to build the clock. And you can also find some more tool making info on the ClickSpring Projects website. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.